No, thanks for having me. Gideon, nice to uh, meet you. Nice to talk. Um, oh, I just feel like it's been like, you know, there we go. Can you see my face now? There we go. Okay, what's up? What's up, Ethan? How you doing? Nice to meet you. Uh, first thing first, Wan. I love you, bro. You're Shout, out. Shout, Shout out. Shout out, Wan. Appreciate you. W. Dan. Whittian. <laughs> Whittian. Yeah. So uh, my editor was kind of telling me about the video. I haven't got the chance to watch your response yet because i was going to watch it later on my stream but he had told me that you were really upset about the thumbnail and um i really don't even look at my second channel he just posts the clips and stuff so he, when he told me and i saw it i was like oh shit i said change it so okay that's nice i appreciate that the new one's a little weird though too maybe you can explain this it says look at him act like an educated african-american i don't know what that means um, I think I know what he was trying to go for there. <laughs> what? Um, for, what? Uh, man, he's talking about your best friend Keemstar, I think. A little play on words. Look I'll, at him act like an educated African American. Do you not like that one? If not, I can tell I don't the get it. It seems like it's another. Not that I know of. I'll tell him after this to change it for you. Yeah, so, so, I guess, well, since you're here, I guess we can talk about the, uh, the video because you accused me of what I felt was like a light jab about the uh, about the uh, the most racist town in America video you made yeah you called me a liberal racist and I I am intrigued by that I just was hoping you unpacked it a little more in your video so maybe you can do that for me here nah yeah um I don't think I called you a liberal racist because me personally I don't think you're a racist you know I but think you said that I verbatim. Do, I said that was liberal racism. Okay, okay. This is liberal racism. So, because I said the same thing about Hassan. So. Okay, so liberal racism. What does that mean? So I feel like you know. I feel like you know what conservative racism is, right? You know, your white picket fence, all American family. You know, hates immigrants, doesn't like. You know, the stereotypical racist, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's the pretty much when you think of a racist, you think of someone that's outwardly like, I hate black people, you know, people that are against BLM. That's what I think of, you know, with racism. But then, Just, yeah, I got you. I feel like what uh, kind of comes under the rug <laughs> and people really don't talk about is liberal racism. And what I think liberal racism and a lot of other black people in black in the black community, we feel like what liberal racism is, is like white people thinking or not even white people, but it's mostly white people thinking they know better than black people thinking like they have to save us more of like a white savior complex like you know i'm pretty sure you heard of white savior right yeah yeah i know what that is so that's what i mean by liberal racism so i just felt really patronized when you were like oh look at him parading for the kkk and yeah it was a light jab and stuff and i got emotional so you know that's on me for getting emotional you know i should have articulated my words a little bit better to get my point across but you know we all say things we regret right Oh, oh, yeah. I don't necessarily regret it, but I regret how I phrased it. So what, how would you like to phrase it? Because I am interested in unpacking that. I just felt patronized, you know? Patronized. I just felt pat yeah. yeah. So, like, because the, I guess the criticism of that video was just that you went there and you're like, this, these guys are all, like, we can talk with these people and we can have a conversation with them. You're mm -hmm. talking to that KKK guy who was basically like, you can't come to my church, right? Yeah, yeah, he said that. And uh, he thinks that, like, whites and black people should be separated. He does. So I guess I just don't... You well, before... Yeah, you kind of just I gave him a platform to talk uncontested. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, um, I want to hear from you. What did, in that situation, for you to have not said that, what would you have liked me to, like, say or condemn him on? <laughs> In that situation. <laughs> well, first I'll say, I think the vi th we all see that the video had um, good intentions. And you want to, and like, we get what you're trying to do out there. And, you know, I think, and I've made this mistake before. When I've had people like Jordan Peterson on, or even Joey Salads, I once debated him. And the problem is when you talk with people that incendiary, with that, like, undefensible, and a lot of them lie and mislead shit, uh, you kind of have to be equipped to respond to it appropriately, right? You kind of have to be 
prepared. Otherwise, they're left to say whatever they want, kind of unchecked, and in a way, you kind of just let the guy give his platform out. And without being, you know, without challenging him in a way that, that I think would have been meaningful. But that being said, you know, I understand what you were trying to do. And it was so do you feel like I came in there like unequipped and, you know, I wasn't prepared really. And I just kind of gave him a platform. Like if that's your opinion, that's your opinion. But is that what you think? I came in there unequipped. I think that you are. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, for sure. OK. Yeah. Well, to say to that, actually. I know, you know, from the title, it's kind of like you probably were thinking, oh, yeah, he went there to, you know, say racism doesn't exist. But actually, when I I don't know if you realized the outfit I had on, I was like sagging, had a white tank top. I really had no idea what type of video I was going to do there Yeah, because I've never been there. I just seen the video and stuff. But when I got there, got to talking to the minorities of the place figuring out and then learning that, okay, it's not actually the town of Harrison. It's this little town of Zinc where, mm -hmm. you know, the KKK compound is. Then going over to Zinc, finding out it's not even the town of Zinc. It's literally just that compound and how pretty much everybody in that area doesn't like them. And, you know, I got everybody else's opinion about it. You know, everybody was cussing them out, talking about how much they disliked them. And then, you know, I go on his property to go talk to him. And me personally, you know, I feel as though to grow as humans. Like if I was just to go there and he talked and I'm like, you fucking racist, you're wrong. You know, obviously yeah, would've got a lot of clicks, would've got a lot of views and everything. But at the end of the day, what would have God done? I feel he I don't think that's the only way to confront people, right? I mean, you don't have to yeah. yell and scream and stuff. Like that would be, I don't know, for me, it's like if I go to like neo-Nazis and be like, yo, we can have a conversation. You just, you, you just want me to fucking die. But I don't know. I, I get what you were. I get you. We were going for it. Right. And it's, but it's like, fun. you know, let's say, you know, you're Jewish, right? Yes. So let's say you did a video where you went to like a neo-Nazi camp mm -hmm. and you had a conversation with them. And for the most part, it was a civil conversation. He said, wait, well, you know, he has to say, which is absolutely wrong and I don't agree with. And then, you know, you say your piece and then you leave it at that. And let's say I was to hop on and be like, oh, look at Ethan parading for the neo-Nazis. You know, he's all well, campaigning I didn't say for you're them. parading. Just to, I, I, I think you said campaigning, if I'm not mistaken. I think you said, pl I think I said, like, giving him a platform. No, nah, you said campaigning. But, you know, it's all good, though. It's all good. Well, what it doesn't matter. But my intention was that you, I didn't say campaigning. But, I mean, I, I so, feel so, like it does matter because so, it, cause it, to me... It offended me, you know, yeah. and I know you like talked about Keem and everything Keem said and like, bro, you know, I'm not stupid. We all know the video where Keem set the hard R like what, three, four times. And, you know, me personally, I don't consider him a racist. Like, you know, no offense. You said the hard R like two, three times. I don't consider you a racist. You know, like people say stuff. It's like I know a racist and I know, you know, someone that just says something. And that guy was a racist, but I knew going there that he wasn't going to change his mind. And that's not what I wanted to go there for. I'm not going there to try to change his mind because it's just not going to happen. And I feel like that's the problem where the left so and the I, right get into an endless debate where one side tries to say changes the other side's mind. Then the other side gets mad that they're trying to change their mind. So they want to rebel against them. And it's another in the thing. I, I just want to put out there what they thought. And then I feel like the rest of the video spoke for itself. It's like, even though there's this much hatred, why did you want to put out what they the thought? City. Or why did you want to put out what they thought? It's the same reason why, you know, you talk about Andrew Tate. You know, it, it needs to be talked about. Did you criticize it, though? I did. I feel like, I mean, I feel like it's pretty obvious that I, I stand I, against I, everything he says. Yeah, I think the, I can the, boil it down to this point, which is basically there's some things that are not even, if you engage it, it legitimizes it in a way that like it doesn't even need to be engaged like it's not even a conversation like if i went to a nazi rally, i was like tell me about why you think all jews should die it's like that's not going to be a productive conversation simply by the fact that there's no real way to justify that and even by engaging it like it's a like a, a reasonable argument you you in a way legitimize it and turn that conversation into what like a legitimate conversation that's really not it's not a legitimate conversation. That's why I wasn't added on to it. That's why I wasn't agreeing with him. I just let him talk. 
And I said, well, why can't I join the church? It was more to flesh out everything that he thought. Because when you really get down to it, he said everything he thought. And then he ended up saying that more white people uh, uh, hurt him and offended him more in his life than black people. So it's like, mm-hmm. OK, if white people did more bad stuff to you in your life than black people, but you'll let white people into your church then why is this hatred of black people coming from and other races coming from? Mm-hmm. So then that's what I was trying to get down to is he's already showing. I haven't even had, he said in the video, I think he said, I haven't had a problem with black people. I've had more problems with white people, mm-hmm. but there's still this stigma of this racism. So obviously it boils down to something. And I feel like as a generation, the more we talk about it, the more that it will be excluded because we see it's wrong. And if you look at it today, I feel like in any point in time in history, especially here in America, you know, racism is going down more and more and more as the new generation sees. So don't, all don't people you that think he was, same. don't you think he was able to, I mean, his message to you, because he knows he's on camera was very scaled back, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you had a hidden camera and him and his homie talking about black people or Jews or whatever, it would have been a lot more vile. So in a way he did some, he was able to do some nice PR on camera for you. And also I will say at one point that really kind of took me back is mm-hmm. when you guys ended your conversation and you said, is there anything you want to say to the people? And he goes, thanks for listening. And I was like, oh, damn, that that's kind of fucked up that he got to just like platform his his beliefs like that. That all being said, um, I think the video is overall good. And I don't, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say like, oh, you, you fucked up and the video is horrible and you should never made it. I think what Hassan was originally trying to do was just, you know, level some some criticism at your approach. And I think ultimately maybe you got a little defensive about it, but I understand that as well. You know, I got defensive about it. Me personally, I feel me being upset about it was justified. But I should have took more time to, you know, react to his video and your video beforehand where I can have all my points written down, where I can say it in a cohesive manner and stuff. But that's not what happened. You know, I like to do live reactions and, you know, I'm here. Yeah, I get it. Me too. I got emotional and I said that. I feel like my, you know, how I feel still stands. But uh, I feel like now coming on here, you know, I kind of got to flesh out more of how I thought, you know, you're not racist, right? No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Then. That but I don't understand. I, st- I still don't understand the the accusation of of me being li- a liberal. I feel racist. like you were exhibiting yeah. liberal racism. So, so how? I just don't understand that because that's that's a pretty harsh thing to level against someone. And um, I feel that. So I'm gonna tell you why yeah. I think you were exhibiting liberal racism. Yeah. So in the left side, I feel you know they're pretty strong allies with like you know the black community, BLM, but you know. I feel like especially the entire black community, what we're starting to see is especially around election time, we're more used for votes than it is for Mm -hmm. actually helping our people. Uh, I think it was a George Floyd bill that was supposed to be signed after he had died about police brutality and everything. But uh, that bill to this day still hasn't been signed. But I think an Asian Lives Matter bill has been signed by him. And I feel also that uh, some LGBTQ bill was signed by him. But that bill, uh, it was around the George Floyd era. But that bill to this day mm-hmm. has yet to been signed. And, and how was I know, being a liberal racist? So how you were being a liberal racist is, you know, Instead of you saying, you know, if you would have said, hey, Gideon, you know, you didn't, you gave him a platform, man. You should have attacked this more. I see, like, you, the way you said it there, cool. Mm-hmm. But in the video, uh, there goes Gideon campaigning for uh, the neo Nazis. And, you know, and with, we, you know what we call that in the uh, black community? You probably don't know what that is because, you know, you're not in the black community. But basically, uh, a lot of other black people have the same sentiment. It's basically, you kind of call me an Uncle Tom. So, like, an Uncle Tom is someone. I know what Uncle Tom is. Yeah, no, I. I Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so you're like you were basically calling me Uncle Tom. No, but I think what all I I think all me and Hassan said was that you just were a little ill-equipped to handle that delicate of a conversation. That's it. I don't understand how that implies you're an Uncle Tom, so to speak, or maybe I'm missing. Maybe I'm missing. But you know, that's the thing. Like you and Hassan, you know, no offense to y'all, but. You guys stay in y'all studios mm-hmm. and you talk about it from afar. And I think in Hassan's video, he said he looks at the empirical data. But, you know, I'm pretty sure before he reacted to that video, he didn't even know what Harrison, Arkansas was. But it's just like, you know, where someone like me, like, yeah, 
You know, I might not be as smart as y'all. You know what it is. I what don't it think is. it's about that. First of all, I, 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 I wanted yeah. to go to the field where it said it's the most racist town. I yeah. put myself for at harm. I put my filmer at harm. Yeah. But we went there and I feel like we've brought something, you know, for the world to see because that video, you know, you see that video and you say, oh, yeah, you know, the video I'm talking about in question where the guy has a BLM sign and it says and everybody was calling him the N word lover and all this stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, was that in the video? I no, it was know. the video that inspired. Oh, 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 oh. Like it was the original. No, I, de as I definitely you know, agree that like the concept and you going there was super brave, not knowing what to expect. Like I totally agree that like the video premise is interesting and you're super brave to go there. I just don't know that. Again, I just don't know that I understand still yet the liberal racism. So accusation. the liberal racism part is, you know, it feels, you know, you're a white man telling mm -hmm. me, oh, Gideon doesn't understand like this racism. He doesn't really quite understand it. He was ill prepared. He was unequipped. Mm -hmm. He didn't know what he was talking about. You know, he should have been more prepared. It's, it kind of sounds like, you know, like whether you wanted to sound like that or not, like you should have been in that situation because you could have been better prepared for it. Mm, that's quite a, that's a leap. I don't think so. I definitely am not. I definitely am not equipped to have that conversation as a, you know, as a Jewish person, that's not my my thing. I think obviously you're you're. But probably... then, but you gave an opinion on me being unequipped for it, like so you said. It, let me ask you this: Is it possible? Is it possible for a black person to not be equipped for that conversation, or are they all just perfectly equipped by the nature of being a black American? It's not the fact about me being equipped or not. It's the fact that me wanted to have the conversation. It's so am I not allowed to point that out without being a racist? Uh, no, uh, you can point out anything you want and I have the right to disagree Sam. with anything you say. There was a black man. Um, I don't know if you know about this. He would go to Klan rallies and he would literally watch them do their burning of the crosses. He would talk to them and eventually the white man he was talking to eventually realized, wow, what I'm doing is wrong. And he actually left being a Nazi and he brought mm -hmm. a lot of other people with him. And so it's like, you know. It'll be the same thing if you told that black man when he went. And the thing about that black man, he wouldn't even go there disagreeing with them. Mm -hmm. He literally did the same thing I did. He went there just to hear what they had to say. And eventually, when you talk to someone and you just keep on spewing what you believe and they don't retaliate or give you their opinion, but they just listen, mm -hmm. then you realize, wow, what I'm saying is kind of fucked up. I know I'm, you're pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I know the guy. Yeah, Dar Daryl Davis. Yeah, he's yeah, super so interesting. Guy. What's, what's the difference between what he did and what I did? Well, what? Well, if you want, first of all, he didn't record it and put it on YouTube, but that, but, but he made a documentary but, about it. Yeah, but also he, well, he spent a lot of time building a relationship with these people, right? And mm -hmm. speaking off camera, speaking candidly with them. I mean, if you really want to know what's the difference, I mean, you had one short conversation with this guy in which he said you can't come to my church, and he even was unwilling to shake your hand. It basically turned around. So, like, uh, actually, I shook his hand. You did, that's, okay. I shook his hand. So, but anyway, cool. I mean, obviously, he developed. A deeper relationship with them because like you said clearly you're not changing their mind in any way which it's very difficult to do I mean they're so entrenched in their ideology but what you did and what he did is very different no so I guess the only difference is he changed his mind because he had more time to be with them and I didn't potentially I mean I don't know about his his approaches but uh, he certainly had a, a, a lot more time to build the relationships and have candid conversations about it off camera so would you say he was more prepared like at yeah, the end yeah, of the day. yeah, so, definitely. But what was he more prepared with besides the fact? Because obviously he had more time with them. So how can I not be getting prepared for that? You know, what if I go back there and I get to talk to him again? That'd be great. But would I still be unprepared? I don't know. I don't know what kind of prep. I don't know. I mean, look, you're you're a young man. You know, I know that guy who did that was like older. He had been through a lot of shit. So I think I, I, I don't know what preparation necessarily looks like. I would assume it's more but about that, I, yeah, being, that's, being that's prepared, being prepared to, you know, respond the, to whatever they're talking. You've got to be prepared for They have logical fallacies that they say they, and stuff. You just being a matter of being prepared to have that dialogue and knowing, like, what's the best way to neutralize or, or cut through. Uh, logical fallacies and stuff like that and world ex and I think experience too as a human being just being able to like 
connect with people on a deep empathetic level that you get from age frankly but well, i'm not me, saying it's a, you know i'm not, I'm not saying it's impossible I, for a young man yeah. to do it either i'm not i mean you know i'm not a debater like you you and hassan you guys not really debater but, of, yeah. okay well hassan yeah. he makes his living off of being a debater and everything i'm not a debater i'm more of uh you know, obviously a prankster, but I wanted to show a different side of me. And I feel like that video really did show a different side of me where yeah, you know, I, agree. I show more yeah. of my interviewing skills, more of, you know, me less of the trolling uh, and more of me just asking the questions, you yeah. know, like Nico did the same video and he actually got to talk to the leader of the KKK. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't see. I agree, man. There's nothing prepared. wrong with it. But do you find it ironic to on one hand, call me a liberal racist for criticizing your preparedness? Uh, to have that conversation while doing a Nazi Hitler salute in front of a KKK building? I mean, you know, it's ironic. It is Obviously, ironic, a black, right? A black man doing that. It's like the same thing with the context of you saying the F word and the N word multiple time on IW stream, you know? Yeah. Were you saying it out of racism? Yes or no? Uh, no, no, no. So obviously, so, so you're was doing, I doing that out of racism? So what? what is the context? The context is a black guy at a KKK camp where he shouldn't be throwing up their salute mm -hmm. obviously i'm being i'm just joking around not joking around about the situation did not, but more of the fact that nazis really even fun hated of them. black people that much i think they they did oh yeah, yeah i yeah, thought yeah. the they nazis definitely. yeah okay so if you want if you're one of the aryan race they didn't like yeah, you but, <laughs> yeah because i remember they like hitler was obsessed with like that olympian well, he so thinks he, he, Jews were at the very bottom of the totem pole, but he had a whole totem pole, and black people were pretty far down there, too. Anybody that wasn't blonde, blue-eyed, yeah, basically, uh, was lower, a lower person. So, Okay, so this is... Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, but I just wanted to come on here like, you know what? I feel like I didn't, you know, really display my true feelings. So I hope you know my true feelings now. You know, I'm not expecting an apology or anything like that. But, like, this is exactly what I want to do. It's like yeah. having the conversation. Instead of us having to beef on Twitter for years and, you know, doing the L3, L3. Because I don't know if you know this, but I actually grew up on you. You know, Vape Nation, y'all. Like, mm -hmm. I grew up on you. I yeah, feel I like heard, you inspired I heard. Yeah. a lot of my... Uh, career and everything so you tweeted out like two days ago i missed the old h3 what does that mean oh man bro you know we missed the old h3 where you and Hilo, uh Hilo, right is that how you pronounce mm -hmm. it yeah where you guys would just sit down react to videos make comedy sketches you know you know the old h3 the h3 that was trying to uh raise a bunch of money for to fight a lawsuit battle i remember actually i was trying to donate my first paycheck to you because around this time you're uh uh, raising money for your, I forgot the dude's name, but uh, Matt like Haas. Hoffman or yeah, Matt, Haas, Matt Haas. Yeah, you were well, trying to raise awesome. money I appreciate for the that. thing, yeah. But you, you reached the goal way before I could even send in that paycheck and stuff. That's so that's awesome. the old H three yeah. I'm talking about. But it seems like when people say that, it's more like dis detractors who are like, I don't like what he's become now. So I guess I'm curious, what is it that I do that you don't like these days? Just to give you an opportunity to talk about it. It's not, yeah. it's not necessarily that I don't like what you do now. It's just me personally. You like the old like, stuff. I like the old stuff. Okay. You know, sometimes we think of the heyday. You know, people are going to say the same thing about me. Mm -hmm. People are going to be like, oh, man, I miss the old Judeon. And I understand, you know, we have to grow up and everything. And, you know, I feel like you maybe took a turn further off the road than most people do with their careers but mm. hey it's working you know you have a successful brand for you you have people like dan w employees in the chat w yeah dan in the chat, definitely dubs <laughs> for well, sure you know Thanks, I, I can't man. hate on you like that you know you got a beautiful family and everything so you know i'm not gonna hate on you for that you know but you know just shouting out the old h3 h3 members you know so it, it was H3. like a it was like a shout out to being like yo this guy's old content rules but like I don't remember the old days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like remember the old days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, but I, ultimately, I want to wrap it up and say, you know, I don't. It's not like I hated the video or even that I had very strong opinions about it. I think it just turned into this back and forth that kind of turned interesting, and then the the orangutan thing was kind of nuts. So. But I'm glad yeah, we could talk Matthew it out. For you. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get on Matthew for that. But <laughs> also, if you go on my community tabs on my second channel, you'll see like three or four months ago, he had posted one thumbnail. I was like, bro, sorry, if we have to delete that other thumbnail because Matthew was wilding. What was it? He, oh man, I forget. But he's a 17 year old. You know, I hired a 17 year old. He's good. So. I mean, 
yeah, I like I like that that he uh, expresses himself a little bit there. But I guess sometimes you you take it too far. I click that shit. <laughs> I was like, like I said, said I, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I heard what you said about uh, you know, I gotta um be more around. So you know, before things go up, you know, I'm gonna take criticism where criticism is due. I'm gonna you know make sure when before things go out. So if it's not on my part. I can nip it in the bud so situations like this don't happen. And, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to do because this is obviously your business. But I would just say going in the future, especially talking about issues like regarding other races, uh, I would say mo maybe more have more self-awareness of like what you're saying because you got to realize different races have different fights they're going against because obviously you talk about so many different topics. So obviously you're going to end up talking about different races. So I would just say more of have like a look on, okay, what could this race be going through at a time where, you know, could my comments maybe offend someone or offend a, this race? And I would say if you go in with that more forethought, because what you said here, if you would have said that in your video, I wouldn't have not said anything. It would have been like, you know what? Fair point. You know, I could see that. But maybe next time, next interview, I can inject more, interject more and, you know, be like, OK, guys, you know, don't listen to that part. But, you know, you didn't give me room to make corrections for the future. You more of just made a statement that low-key I felt patron was patronizing. But you know what? I feel like we squashed it off here. And uh, by I hope the there's no hard feelings. No, there's no hard feelings. I never did. I like you. I think you're funny. I think you're talented. And I think you I have a bright future. I appreciate that. That means a lot. That means a lot. Yeah. But just, just so you know, like when I said the N-word, that was wrong, right? Like I apologize for that. And I've learned a lot. And, and, and that's something that I would never do now. And... um I hope you know that about the Nazi salute as well. Yeah, and you know what? Even in the context of uh, you're Jewish, so I apologize if that offended you. And, you know, I was hoping that it was just, pretty well known yeah. that it was ironic, but, you know, it seemed to take offense to you. So since it took offense for you, well, I apologize you, on my end. So I appreciate you apologizing, and I apologize okay. on my end as well. There you, you go. <sighs> Beautiful. Well, I, I appreciate you being mature and calling in. And uh, saying what up, and yeah, man, uh, you know, I don't uh, like beef, you know, but you know, Shout I, out I, and, and you know, I, I saw you gotten in, in trouble with, with some pokey stuff, and you guys squashed the beef. I thought that was cool too, but again, yeah, I just, I, I, it's not, it's not like a heavy criticism, you know, it's just some, some comments, but I, I understand it's all good. I understand getting uh, feeling patronized as well, so it's all good. I apologize, I appreciate that, Ethan. Thank what you. What do I apologize for? Uh, right. What? Uh, yeah, I apologize. Appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, thank you, bro. Appreciate you calling uh, in. Hey, everybody in the chat, W Podcast, W Stream right Wayne. now. Wayne. You, get, you guys can still call me Ladeon. It's all good. No, we've but, been uh, calling you Wittion today. Wittion. Yeah. Wittion? Okay. W Vape today. Vape Nation. W <laughs> oh, Vape uh, Nation, nice, bro. Guys. All right. Love you, Dan. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Love you, Dan. <laughs> Dan became Dan. the uh, hero. The hero we don't deserve. But I just actually I wasn't sure what I was I just and I don't mean to be offensive I just I, I, I think it's more of like that he's young and if you were if you felt like he was being uh, too targeted you apologize that he felt that way because I guess you've been there you've I guess grown. I just I don't like to make him feel bad yeah you know but I don't think I was exhibiting liberal right no no so. I mean but I, I mean listen he's a sweet guy. Mm -hmm. I do like him. It was awesome that he called in. I don't know how that conversation went, frankly, uh, but it's over now. How did that go, do you guys think? Be honest. I think it was good. I think it's always good to talk to I thought to it was though. good. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I thought it went well. No, I think we got a little bit more to cut to what his intentions with that video are. I mean, ultimately, we don't have to agree on whether it was a good idea or not to have the conversation, but... You know, you acknowledged that you felt like he had good intentions. He clarified that he does not support anything that that guy says. You know, it, 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 I think from his mindset, he wanted to just have the conversation so people could hear for themselves mm -hmm. what this person believes. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like giving them the rope so that they I mean, and that, that, that's how sort of Louis thing. Thoreau does his interviewing style. He calls it radical listening. Sure. Where he lets people kind of just expose themselves. Or even like own. Andrew uh, from Channel 5 yeah, does that yeah. a lot as well. Um, and, yeah, it, you know, I think ultimately I, I don't necessarily agree that you were exhibiting this, but what he brought up about, you know, 
the liberal racism thing boiling down to um, people in the Democratic Party using I agree, black but I don't know why and not actually supporting them legislatively. I that, agree. That's a legitimate grievance. I agree, but like it's weird to bring. It doesn't seem fair to me to bring that up and then as a point to talk about how I'm a liberal racist. I don't think like it that just seems really like a applies. disingenuous segue. I, I don't know if. So I don't know if it's disingenuous. I, I do I, agree that it's a. What's it got to do with big, me? It's it's a stretch for sure. But what is the fucking the Democrats not doing more for Black Americans got to do with me? Um, yeah. Well, I think you know his feelings about that may have just spilled over into feeling like what you were doing was also being condescending because you know he obviously has that opinion that he feels like liberals are condescending to Black people. Um, I agree with you that I don't think it really applied in the case of what you said, but I think that's probably where that's coming from.